Good morning. And if you're watching this on the day that this video is posted, good Christmas morning. I, I woke up to a YouTube comment that said that Zygu just posted, or sorry, Radioddy just posted a um, more photos of the X6200 on the website, and he said, please do a review. I'm not going to do a review, but I will show you some of the photos that are on the website because we still don't have the radio. And that's one thing, one, one thing before I show you guys this. Everyone was literally already reviewing this radio before we even have solid photos of it, before we have a solid price, before we have functions. Stop reviewing the radio. Anyways, let's take a look at these new photos and some new information. We'll talk about what we saw from the previous video if you haven't seen it. This is the, uh, the new updated listing and uh, we have some new photos. And you can see that the interface looks basically just like the X6100 except for some color changes. Which, yeah, I mean... It's the same. It's the same there. But what has definitely changed is this very rugged looking design, which I'm I'm kind of for. This um you can see first they've added what looks like these rails, these like little metal rails, which I've added some to mine, but to have them built into the radio is pretty nice. You'll also notice that they have these little bumpers around the corners. I, and th that just makes it look more rugged. I think it might be, hopefully it's like some type of like rubber or shock absorbent um, little bumpers. Maybe that means if they drop, then, you know, it'll, it'll protect itself from falls. Now, some of these pictures do vary because this isn't still the final product. This is this uh, Ray Oddity saying this is kind of like a Christmas gift <laughs> to see some more photos of this thing. It's because you'll notice like here in this picture, this knob has this white, um, like rugged little... I don't know, silicone thing around it, but in the other photos, it does not look like it is that way. Other than that, we still have most of the same buttons we did on the X6100, um, the same knobs. Up here, um, there used to be maybe three other buttons up here, but instead there's this little plate. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with this plate here, but uh, there are a few buttons that are in there. I think it mainly, that would have been the, the preamp the um attenuator button in there so i'm not sure what what's going on there but i mean it looks nice uh besides that um there's not many new information right i'm not talking about anything that the x6100 already has because let's just assume that this thing basically has all of that but it's supposed to be approved upon so that you know the listing shows something about two usb interfaces all that that's already on it uh, what we do have confirmed is uh, wide FM broadcast reception, aviation band reception. So at least we can we know that we can receive, I guess, FM radio stations, some of those aviation stations. So a little bit of frequency expansion natively, which is kind of nice. Not much new information, but we do have that nice rugged, rugged look of the radio, which, I mean, does look good. Uh, new features. It says recording transmission. Yeah, I mean, these aren't new. What is new is support wireless FT8, and that's not really new. We have that kind of on the X6100. If you've used WFU, now you can connect to Wi-Fi and, and, and pipe into uh, WSJTX. I'm not sure if they have some other plan now. I'm not sure if they're talking about some other program, but the interface looks basically exactly the same. I'm trying to look for anything new on it and i don't see anything new on the software we have three of these auxiliary jacks i think it, one of them might be for cw um i'm not antenna port on the uh the other side on the left side which is in line with um what the xcc 100 had oh yeah and of course uh they're talking about this um Bat removable battery pack and that's probably what this is here on the back i think i said it was something else before that's probably the removable battery pack which is nice you'd be able to just snap that battery out of there and snap another one in uh time will tell if that's going to be better than you know bringing along your own uh, bio you know lithium ion whatever whatever flavor of batteries that you typically use for these radios now these look like real photos they uh, these are three are definitely real photos not any type of like generalized concepts it might not be the final photo but now here we are on the thing that piqued my interest last time it says it has two preset external expansion component installation positions which can be used to install external expansion components and integrate them 
with the host allowing for applications and other frequency bands or installation of peripherals. There's a whole lot of mumbo jumbo to me, but what I'm hoping and that they're advertising here is maybe some type of like frequency expansion slot that will allow you to, I don't know, attach something modular inside that will allow you to do two meter, 70 centimeter. That is completely theoretical. That's completely me guessing, kind of hopeful, wishful thinking, but I'm still really curious on what that means. And I, I guess we're not going to find out really today. The rest of this is just saying it's all the other stuff. It supports their amplifier. It supports host mode, yada, yada. I think all this is mostly uh, the same stuff with the X6100. Besides this, meets future expansion needs for additional features. Again, we're hinting at this um, this expansion interface slot stuff. Really neat talk. I just want to see what it all means. You know what I mean? Everything else is advertised the same as the X6100 besides support remote control wireless FT8 operation. It's probably talking about WFU. Um, I don't know though. While, uh, and also the WFM or wide uh, FM broadcast reception aviation band reception that's new. Uh, somebody may have hacked the 6100 firmware to do that, but here it's supported to at least receive it. And we also have some specs, which I can't, I don't think we've seen all of these specs before, but, uh, it's, it's basically on par with the 6100 with some, uh, with a few upgrades here and there. And then we are, we have the comment saying they should fix the X6100 before selling this new model radio. I try to hold off on my opinions on, on these things until we have a price and we have definite, um, we have some definite settings and stuff that are locking in. Uh, some definite features that are being advertised, like hard features, hard pictures, if this is a final product. But uh, you can really see the stigma that goes along with uh, Chinese radios with the release of radios like this. Because when I talk about the 6200, it's just filled with like almost like negative reviews. This listing actually had, I don't know how many, like 20 or 30 reviews Um before these photos even came out of just people already writing reviews for the radio and it's all this you know it comes from a bias of Chinese radios and it also comes from the history of the X6100 before this video is up I don't want to just do the photo video let's talk about that for a minute because I got those comments in my last video and I'm gonna get them here too so let's set some things to it aside here and and give everybody a fair chance the biggest complaint that people are getting when they're seeing the 6200 is that the x6100 did not deliver so i personally i went through these comments and every time someone said they need to fix the 6100 first i replied and i, I was trying to get an idea like what, what is it that you're talking about specifically because um i feel like with the 6100 there were some issues with it and those issues were one the battery maintenance in in essence, do the same thing I complained about my Yesu radio on a video last week, that you couldn't charge and use the radio at the same time, or you couldn't charge and transmit at the same time. That's my problem with the uh, the battery on the 6100. It's a it's a heat dissipation issue. There's really nothing they could do besides add a fan or add some radiators, and it might make the device bigger. They may be make some design changes, but that's what's going on with the charging. The second is the broadcast interference issue, and uh, there's nothing that they can do with software, I don't think, to solve that. Um, you, the only thing that I, I know of now is people are building those, um, broad, uh, those AM broadcast station reception filters. I don't know if it's an oversight or it's, hey, this is just, it's got a cheap front end, it's going gonna, it's gonna to handle what it handles, and it's gonna not ha going to handle what it not handles. Either way, it is an issue, so that's kind of what I go after. When I'm judging a radio by its features... I'm going to go after the listing that's always been there and see what, what's being advertised for the radio, right? Because if they never talk about a feature and they just seep it into the software somewhere and they're working on it, I'm not going to care if it doesn't work. Um, I would like for them to work if, if they're going to put it in there, but this series radio has very much been experimental, and you can see that with the ability to unlock the radio. It's not, a, um, it's not your iPhone's of radios for sure it's it's more it's more like your androids it's more like your 
there are open Androids that allow you to hack hack the phone and put on your own firmware. So if you're looking for the Apple of radios, in an essence, like things are locked down, but everything that is in there works perfectly. You just can't do anything that you the manufacturer doesn't intend you to do. Then go for one of those Apple radios, such as JSU, such as ICOM, and you'll be happy. At, there's not a price yet. There's not official, this is the radio model that is going to ship. There is not all the features listed, so I'm not going to sit here and make a review. I'm not going to sit here and make a generalization saying you should buy or you should not buy this radio. We just don't have enough information just yet. It looks good. Uh, let's wait and see what the price is going to be. Let's wait and see what all the features are going to be. So far, it's looking decent. It looks like a, a direct successor to the X6100. 60, yeah, this X6. It looks like a direct successor to the 6100. Um, they've polished a few of the bells and whistles so far. They've added a few more features. But what really interests me is this expansion um, interface that they keep uh, teasing. And so I think that's going to be the key of what makes this radio, besides the removable battery pack, different from the X6100. I just ask you guys, hold off on the reviews of the radio. It's not out yet. We don't know any information. And uh, um, when we talk about the X6100, if you're going to talk about it below, that's fine. But think about the features that are advertised on the listing compared to what uh, you're, you may be, have issues with, right? If you have issues with features that aren't even on the listing for the 6100 or as advertised as features, it's not really a valid complaint. Uh, the official page, it shows you exactly what the radio is intended for, what it supports, and outside of that, it's kind of on, on the table. And if you are a hacker slash tinkerer, you're going to lean toward this X-Series radios. If you, are, you just want to plug in something in that works, um... You don't care about adding features down the road or doing any like this cool stuff. The Yesu, the Icom, the Kenwood, all of those are probably better for you. So keep that in mind. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Merry Christmas if you're watching this today and uh, 73 to you.